Welcome to Joydala Fashion Guide. In today's video, we're going to be making the dress you are seeing on the screen for a five years old queue. We are going to be making use of bridal satin and the sequence, and we'll be using a lining as well. The measurements we are working with are shoulder 10 inches, so we'll be dividing shoulder by two, which will give us five, and then we are going to be adding half inch to that. The shoulder to the bust is 7 inches. The shoulder to the waist is 11 inches. The bust circumference is 23 inches. The waist circumference is 21 inches. And the hip is also 21 inches. So we will not be needing the hip. And then the dress length is 28 inches. The bust, the waist, and the hip, we are going to be dividing it by 4. So for this dress we are making use of the shoulder the waist and the bust and the waist the ample depth is five inches half of the shoulder can also serve as the ample depth the neck width is 2.75 that is two three quarter and then the front neck depth is two and quarter while the back neck depth is one inch and then the shoulder width, when we are true with the dress, should be 2 inches. So first of all, you cut out, we are going to be cutting out the flare part of the dress. Take a look at that photo. So to know the amount of fabric to put on fold, we are, we are cutting it as a full circle. So we'll divide the waist circumference by 6.28. The waist is 21 and then we will add zipper allowance to it, zipper allowance of 2 inches, making 23 inches. And that 23 inches will now divide it by 6.28 because we are cutting a full circle. So 23 divided by 6.28, we are going to have 3.66, which is approximately 3.7. And then the length of the flare. Is going to be 19 inches so you add the radius to the length of flare to know the amount of fabric to put on fold and after adding up mine added up to 22.7 so you want to have 22.7 in four places so this is on fold I've already cut out my long fabric so the length of this so 22.7 so i just made it 23 inches so i have 46 inches by 46 inches so when you have the 46 inches by 46 inches depending on your own measurement you fold it into two and then you fold it into four because we are cutting a full circle you fold it into four like this. So at this corner, we are going to mark our radius. The radius is 3.7. So that is 3.75. So you just mark the radius. Sorry for the sound, it's raining here. So you can always cross check if this will give you the waist. I have six three quarter. So I have a total of 27 inches. The way it's supposed to be 23. So I'll be adding half inch seam allowance to the top. I won't cut here so that now after sewing, we'll have exactly what we want. 
so I will now measure the length the length is 19 inches so you can also add seam allowance with the damp part so I'll just mark 19 and a half So you just, with your tape here, you just put it around like this. So this is how you keep marking it. So notch the midpoint, open up the center back. The zips. Well, I'm going to be adding zipper. And then fold it into four like this and notch the side because we are not joining the side, but we need to attach something to the side so we know the points. So I'm going to be cutting the lining. I'll cut the, the lining 180, so the waist circumference divided by 3.14 to get the radius, and then the lining will be shorter than this. I'll cut that off camera. So I'm going to be cutting the bodies now. I've cut out a piece. This is for the front. This is for the back. To know the amount of fabric to put on fold, the shoulder to the waist is 11 inches, and I added one inch for seam allowance. So I have here, I have here 12 inches, and then the bust is the biggest part. The bust is 23 inches, divided by four is 5.75, which is approximately six inches. So I add seam allowance to that, making eight. So I have it by eight and a half cut out here for the front part. And then for the back part, I added extra one inch because of zipper allowance. So this is just okay. Now I'm going to mark the starting line. I'm going to mark half inch for the seam on top. So this will be my starting line. So this is my starting line, this is the shoulder line, and then the shoulder is 10 inches. 10 inches divided by 2 is 5, plus half inch seam allowance. And then the neck width is 2.75, that is 2 to the quarter. So when we are true, the shoulder should be around 2 inches. So I'm just add extra half inch to this. So I'm making the shoulder six inches. It's better for it to be enough than it's not. So the sh I've made the shoulder 11. So that the shoulder divided by two will be five and a half plus half inch, that will be six. Okay, I don't want to have any shortage at the shoulder. 
If it is too much, you can always trim it off. But the neck width is 2.75. And then I'm coming down with this with half inch for shoulder slant. So I'll connect that to the neckline. So we are drafting both the front and the back piece together. So the armor depth is 5.25. Because it's a sleeveless, I'll be making it 5. If it's not enough, I can always adjust later. So I've marked out what is there so I can have a straight line. So this is now the chest line. So on this armhole that I'll get half of the armhole. So on the chest line, put in your bust circumference divided by bust circumference divided by four, okay? And I'm adding same allowance to that. Remember that I adjusted this line. Initially, our point was here. And then for the back, sorry, for the front, we'll go in by quarter of an inch. So after sewing, you can always reshape the armhole if the shoulder is too much because it's supposed to end up with a shoulder of at least two inches wide after sewing. So shoulder to bust is seven inches. Shoulder to waist is eleven inches. So this is the bust line, and this is the waist line. Then this is the Allowance to join it to the flare. We need this to join it to the flare. So on the bust line, put in the bust circumference divided by four. And it's not a dress that is so tight like that. Children need to ask a little bit of ease. So I mark the six inches. And then one and a half inch seam allowance. Note you can always trim out your seam allowances. The waist is 5.28. 5.25, sorry. Then I'll add the seam allowance. So do what to make use of your own measurements. And then for the neckline, the back neckline, I'm coming down by one inch. And then the front, we are coming down by two point two and a quarter. So with the French curve, we'll just mark that out. That is for the back. And this is for the front. And the shoulder, I'll put in our sh shoulder allowance. This is to join the shoulder. So I'm going to be cutting with the back pattern first.
So I'll use this to cut out the lining and also use it to cut out the sequence. You just fold your sequence, then place your fabric, place uh, the satin on top and cut. So to complete the front, I will cut the neckline. and the armhole. So you place this on the sequence to cut. your pin to secure it in place. So you use it to also cut out the line. panel is complete so this will be like this so let's finish with all the cutting and then I will explain how to sew it So this is the back, the back piece, and then this is a sequence for the back. This is the lining. So we are through with the back. This is the front that we cut out. Now I said we will cutting out a lining, but the lining will be short. And so I use 180 degree flare to cut out the the lining. The waist divided by 3.14. So as you can see, the lining is shorter. Now I'm going to use this to cut out that design in front. 
because it's going to be the design is going to be 180 so it's going to be half of it's going to be half of of this okay and then because I got to place it on the front only and then one side is going to be 11 inches while the other side will be six inches okay we'll measure here 11 for example we'll measure here 11 so i'm going to use it to cut it out we'll measure something like this 11 and then we'll measure this side this side will be shorter by about five inches so this side will be six and then we are going to curve it to something like this for that design. So I will cut it out and show it to you. So this is what it looks like. This is the back. So this is what it looks like after cutting it out. Okay. So this is the lining for the inside. If you have excess fabric, you can also use the barrier satin as lining. So I'm going to be cutting the sequence that is here. Okay, so you can just measure what you have here and divide it by 3.14 to know the radius. And then the length of the flare, the length of that flare is going to be six inches. Six inches. So if you have enough, just fold it into two. So we are going to be placing it here, like this. So there are two ways you can do it. You can simply just place your fabric, place the sequence, and then place this on top like this. Mark out six inches, major six inches. So it's going to be in a circular, in a round form. Okay. Or use the the one eighty degree flare to cut it. So I'm going to be cutting it with one eighty degree flare. I'll just measure what I have here. So this is how I place it to cut. Because I'm going to be attaching it to this down part. Sewing the length should be six inches, so you can always trim up the excess later. So, we are through with all our pattern, and then we need a long strip to tidy the edge here. So, just measure what you have. Have 39 and a half, so let's say 40. So you use the brighter satin to cut, cut out a long strip. So we are true with all our pattern to sew. We place this. On it like this so just use your pin to secure it in place
So it's going to be like this after sewing. This is how it's going to be after sewing. Okay. So you confirm what you have left. If there's any excess, you trim it. And then we'll use this to tidy the edge. We'll sew on the wrong side first, like this. We we'll sew on it round from the wrong side. The right side of the fat of the satin should face the wrong side of the sequence. So you sew it like this. So once you get to the end, you are going to flip it to the front. So you cut out the excess, then you fold it to the front. The way you the way you do piping, or the way you sew bias. So at the end of the day, it will end like this. So that is how I need to sew this one. So our length is supposed to be six inches. So just trim out any excess and then turn with this. So after that, notch the center. So after that, I'm going to place it on the front this is the center we match the center together like this so this edge this place that is the side you can just fold it in like this and use your hemi glue to secure it in place or you mark where it's supposed to be mark the straight line okay and then you turn it to sew you flip it like this then you sew here down okay before you turn it to this side you do the same thing for the other side so that when you finish, it will rest on it like this. So that is how I need to sew it. We'll be adding the line when we are through with everything to tidy the inside so that the seam allowance at the waistline will not be shown. And then for the back panel or the back pattern, so you place this over, make sure it's the shiny side. So you place it on it like this. So just run a loose stitch all around it to secure it in place. Run a loose stitch all around it to secure it in place. After that, you place it on it like this. And sew the zipper line one inch. Sew the zipper line one inch. So there are two ways you can do this. After you have used the 
you have joined it individually. So after you have sewn these two together, then you can now use the lining to turn them, to turn it separately. Okay? But I'm going to be turning it like an inseam so that we can cover this armhole. So I'll join all the main fabric together first, then join lining together separately. So just use your your stitch to to sew these two together so that they'll be together. Once you have done that, do the same thing to this front panel. Place it on it like this. You sew around the neckline. Just sew around every part. Then after that, you place this on it and join it by the shoulder. You join the shoulder. You join the shoulder. You do the same for this, for the lining. Pull the two lining, the back piece together, the front. Then join it by the shoulder. Join the shoulder. I'll come back to show you what it looks like before we proceed to the next step. So this is what we have. After joining, then I use the sardine to turn here like bias. So I'm going to be attaching it to the main flare. I've pinned one side. To be able to, to know the exact position to put it, you, you mark that side that we marked earlier, that we notched earlier, and then you place the main flare on a mannequin so that you get it very well. And then you're going to pin it down like this so that we we'll flip it this way. Then the same we not show here. Okay. We are also going to do the same thing here on the other side. So to be able to, it's going to be like this. So to be able to sew it, you have to flip this this way. So that you can sew it. So I'll just use pin to hold it down for you to see. I wrote a line here as a guide. So that when we are through, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like this. Don't worry about what is inside. By the time you put on the body, it will be to relax. After that, we match this, the middle, we match it to this middle part. Then you just use a loose stitch to hold both of them together. Okay? So I put it on my body for you to see what it looks like. This is for a child. This is what it like. Industrial weaving to finish the edge. And then just leave it like that. If not, you fold it in. Fold it in twice. And sew it. So this is the lining for the upper bodies. I've ironed it. And then this is the main fabric. I've joined the shoulders. 
So we are going to be turning the neckline and the armhole with the line. So we are going to do the neckline first. So you mash shoulder to shoulder. Press the seam open. And then you use your pin to secure it. Do same for this side. So we are going to sew the neckline like this. But you leave half inch here first. Because you are going to be, you can leave one inch first. One inch for the zipper allowance. Because you are going to fix the zip first before using the lining to turn it. So measure one inch. And then start Sewing so from here like this. They also mark one inch this way. So you stop here. You sew like this. Then you notch the neckline so that it will be it will relax when we turn it in. So you pin it in place. You sew half inch. Then you notch it. You repeat the same for this side. I'll come back to show you how to turn it inside out. So this is what we have after joining with the waist. So I've so around the armhole, the neckline. So I've not round it. So I'm going to bring it inside out. I'm going to turn it. Through the shoulder. So you do same for the other side.
So you can go and press it so that it can relax. So you see why we have to notch it. Trim out, trim off any unwanted shoes. So, if you want to iron it, iron the satin side on low heat. So the next thing is to we're going to sew to close the side. So you can sew sequence against sequence, lining against line, like this. Finish is going to be like this. It's going to be like this. So you sew with the same allowance that you have left for the side. Do same for this side as well. When you finish it to be like this. Then you notch the midpoint. it together like this so you have to check your measurements check your armhole then mark it before you close it up like this okay if not Another way of doing it is to sew it separately. Another way of doing it is to turn it individually. That is, you turn this alone. You stitch it. So 
This is another way of doing it. So, so that when you finish, it will be like this. And then later, you can now check the measurement and now sew on top. Okay. So I think I'm going to be doing this so that when they come to try it later on, and there's any adjustment to be easy to do. So just do that. Join the side. After you have joined the side, you now attach it to the main body. It's going to be like this. So you place it right side facing each other like this. this so you just match it match it to the end with the line to the end after that you fold it down So after joining the waistline, you join the waistline. You join the waistline. So to join the waistline, you place it right side facing each other at the middle where you have notched. Place it on it like this. Then use your pin to secure it in place first. Use your pin to secure it. You pin it to this side. We also do the same to the other side. Okay? So that when you finish, it should be something like this. Let's do this. Come back to see what it looks like. Then we we'll fix our zipper and that will be all for the dress. So this is what we have after joining the dress at the waistline. So make sure that the seam align. So I better to fix the zipper now and that will be all. Fix the zipper, fold it down and that will be all for the dress. One more thing, we still need to put the, the bow tie here. For the bow tie, I've cut out, let me quickly explain the bow tie. I've cut out a uh, Six three quarter by seven one quarter, and it's in two pieces. On one side, I'll iron gum stain. I'll not iron gum stain on the other side. After which, I'm going to stitch it all around. The side I have the gum stain, I'll put a little hole at the middle and turn it out from there. Then I have this other one cut out for the quarter by two and quarter. Do I still get to trim it? I'll trim at the excess. I'll fold it into two like this, right side facing each other. And then I'll also make it one inch. Okay. After which I'll turn it inside out. Then I'll show you what it looks like. For the zip, we are going to be using this invisible zip. So you mark where the zipper is going to stop. 
and then you close up you close it up from there see the mark here the zipper will stop after which i close it up here then to fix the zipper we are going to use the lining to cover it but before then you get your pins ready then you can use your truck to mark it as a guide so the zip is going to be on it like this So after pinning it in place like this, we are going to stitch. We stitch close to the zipper tit to this place. Then we actually do the same for the other side. So after you have pinned it in place, you close the zip and then you sew. Close the zip and so make sure that the middle where you have the joining you see make sure it aligns so it close the zip up then you stitch close to the zipper tips then when you are through with that when you are through with that you are going to use the lining to cover it like this so you stitch here and then you sew on it like this okay the down part also has a line this is the line so you want to join it at the waistline Save for this other side. So you stitch here, also stitch here, and then now sew over the line. Remember that this will be like this, okay? And then you bring this on it, you place it over like this. If you like, you can mark it with a chalk as a guideline, but you can feel the zipper it. So you just carefully be careful and just sew on it okay so that I can cover the zipper so that we will finish it to be like this only the zipper teeth will be showing so that is how we are going to fix the zip now when you've done that you fold it down and then we attach the bow tie and that will be all for the dress i'll show you the final look of the dress so here is the final look of our dress please like my video
subscribe to my channel Jodala fashion guide to keep seeing more videos like this this is Jodala fashion guide i hope you find this tutorials helpful don't forget to give me a thumbs up and please leave comments below for me in the comment section until next time when i come your way again it's bye for now